Hi friends, here is Lucas. This is a free lesson from my best-selling course about Kotlin coroutines and flow for Android development. You can find the link in the description to get the course for a nice discount. Welcome to this new module where you will learn all about concurrent flows, how to deal with back pressure in flows, and how to switch the coroutine context within a flow. In this first lecture of the module, you are going to learn about the buffer operator. One morning, while cooking pancakes for breakfast for my kids, I found out that the process of cooking and eating pancakes is actually a pretty good analogy to the buffer operator. This might sound strange to you, but let me explain. I already created a new package called concurrency in our flow playground and in there I created a new file called buffer.kt. And in this file we have a suspending main function together with the coroutine scope scoping function. In the main function we first create a flow with the flow builder and in this flow we want to cook actually five pancakes, so we use the repeat block and pass 5. And then we are going to cook the pancakes, so at first start cooking pancake is printed out. And then in order to simulate the cooking process, we delay for 100 milliseconds. So cooking a pancake takes 100 milliseconds. And afterwards, when the pancake is ready, we print out that it is ready. And of course, at the end, we emit this pancake. Down below, we then collect from the flow. So this presents the consumer of the pancake. So the one who actually eats the pancake. And therefore, we would first print out start eating pancake. And eating the pancake takes a bit longer, 300 milliseconds. And after the pancake is eaten, we print out finished eating pancake. When we now run this main function, you can see that the execution of the flow is completely sequential. At first, pancake number one is cooked. So start cooking pancake one is printed out. And when the pancake is ready after 100 milliseconds, then pancake zero ready is printed out. And then the collector starts to eat the pancake. So start eating pancake is printed out. And only after the collector has finished eating the pancake, does the emitter start to cook the next pancake. Let's have a look at this diagram to illustrate what's going on here. At first, the collector starts with the collection. This triggers the emitter to start its work and so it starts to cook pancake number zero. After 100 milliseconds, the pancake is ready and so the emitter emits it. Then the hungry collector now starts to eat the pancake, which takes 300 milliseconds. And only after the collector is done processing the emission, or in other words, eating the pancake, does the emitter start to cook pancake number one. And once this is done, the collector eats this new pancake again. This process can be improved though. How? Well, as you can see here, the emitter isn't doing anything while the collector is eating the pancake. So what we now want to achieve is that the emitter shouldn't wait until the collector has eaten the pancake, but instead it should continue to cook the second pancake while the collector eats the first one. So what we want to do is to decouple the emission from the collection. How can we do that? Well, it's actually pretty simple we can use the buffer operator. 
So let's apply the puffer operator to our flow. And if we run this code now again, then as you can see, once again, the emitter starts to cook pancake zero. And once the pancake is ready, the collector starts to eat the first pancake. But now what's different from before is that the emitter now doesn't wait anymore for the collector to finish the pancake, but instead it starts to cook the second pancake right away. Let's again have a look at the diagram for this flow that uses a buffer now. Again, initially the collector starts to collect from the flow and the emitter then starts to cook pancake number zero. Once the pancake is ready, the emitter sends it to a channel. I will explain in a minute why the channel is used internally now instead of simply emitting the pancake. After the first pancake is ready, the collector now again starts to eat this pancake. And what's different now is that in the meantime, the emitter starts to cook the second, third, and fourth pancake. After the collector has eaten the first pancake, it immediately starts to eat the second pancake. So as you can see, now the emitter runs independently from the collector. In other words, we now have a flow where parts of it now run concurrently. Because the code in the flow builder here now runs at the same time as the code in the collect block here. Also, my kids are happier, since they now can grab new pancakes right away, once they have finished their previous ones, and they don't need to wait until the new one gets cooked. But what exactly happens under the hood here? Well, without using the buffer operator, when the execution of the flow was completely sequential, the whole flow was running in a single core key, which is the one in which the terminal operator collect is called. This way, either the code in the flow builder or the code in the collect block was executed at a certain point in time. By using the buffer operator now, the code in the flow builder runs in a different core team than the code in the collect block. And that's why parts of the flow can run concurrently now. When the whole flow is running in a single coroutine, a call to emit is basically just a function call to the collect block with the emission as the input argument. When the flow builder now runs in a different coroutine than the collector, the communication via function call doesn't work anymore. And therefore, a channel is used internally so that these two coroutines can communicate with each other. And now you can see a use case where a channel is used internally. We talked about this in the previous module about channels. So we really rarely use channels by ourselves, but oftentimes, like the buffer operator, channels are used under the hood so that coroutines can communicate with each other. So because a channel is now used internally, there is a send call instead of an emit call in the diagram that shows the flow with the buffer. Now what exactly happens with pancakes that are cooked and ready to eat, but not eaten yet? So what happens with pancake one here, for instance, once it is cooked, but not yet eaten by the collector? As the well-chosen name of the operator suggests, a buffer is installed in the flow processing pipeline. In this buffer, items that wait to be processed end up there. And as you can see, once the collector has processed the first pancake, it takes the next available pancake from the buffer and starts to process this one. 
For the pancake analogy, the pan that is cooking the pancakes represents the emitter and the plate that is standing next to the pan represents the buffer. Whenever a new pancake is ready, it will be placed on the buffer, which means that the pancakes in the buffer are ready to be processed, so taken and eaten. Whenever the hungry collector has eaten up his current pancake, he will go to the buffer and take and eat the next pancake. Of course, my kids are very greedy and don't only take a single pancake, but many of them. But let's pretend for the sake of this analogy that I have well-behaved kids who only take a single pancake. Great, now you know how the buffer operator works. I hope my pancake analogy now makes sense to you and hopefully it helped you with understanding the concepts in this lesson. In the next lesson, we're going to take a look at how big this buffer actually is and what will happen if the buffer gets full. So if you want to dive deeper into coroutines and flow, then I can highly recommend my complete course that contains everything to fully understand and successfully use coroutines and flow in your apps. We will together create a stock live tracking app that uses flow extensively. You will also learn about state flows, shared flows, channels, and many, many other topics. You can find a link to the course in the description and I would love to have you on board.